Hello everyone and welcome back to another Luma video. Today's video is going to be on learning the basics of synthesis. I know there's a lot of people that watch this channel that might not know too much about the high level stuff and there's a lot of people that watch this video for a lot of the high level stuff so I wanted to make a video to kind of you know if you're at that lower portion of learning synthesis uh, I wanted to make this video for you so you can kind of get your head in the game and learn some synthesis. Even if you're pretty experienced with synthesis I'd still recommend watching this video maybe for just a refresher. Maybe you might learn something, maybe you might I, uh, remember something that you previously forgot. But anyways, let's just get into the video. Also, all the plugins will either be default with FL Studio or they will be free and third party. And for the third party ones, I'll link them in the description. All right, so this is 3X Oscillator. It's a very, very basic plugin. Uh, it's free with FL Studio, but basically what the takeaway from this is, is just kind of learning the basic shapes. So we have our sine wave uh, and let's just disable these other two ones, uh, which we do by just turning down the volume here. So this is what a, uh, just a sine wave sounds like. And it's going to be pretty useful to kind of memorize what these sound like by ear. And that might sound difficult as a beginner, but uh, even if you don't make an effort to do it, at some point you're going to learn them. So don't stress too much about it. Uh, this is a square wave. It's very loud. Uh, if you distort any pitch to the maximum amount, it's going to start to sound like some type of square wave uh, just because of the way that it looks, you know, like if you have a very distorted signal, it's going to peak at some point and it's going to turn into a square. So that's why it sounds like very loud. This is a triangle wave. This is a sawtooth wave. And this is going to be one of the most common waves that you'll use and is going to be like kind of the default shape that you see in a lot of ESTs. Uh, and then this is noise, which sounds like noise, pretty self-explanatory. Other than that, uh, 3X oscillator is just good for messing around with what certain waves sound like together. So like if we wanted to just mix around a few different waves, see what they sound like, we can do that. So this is Citrus. It also comes with FL Studio. Uh, you can get really, really in depth with it or you can keep it pretty simple. Um, it's good because it has a lot of presets. And when I say a lot, like I mean a lot. It, it's stupid how many presets are in this thing. So let's just set this to default uh, and we're just gonna get a sine wave once again. But if you can, you can see how it kind of modulates between these different um, waves here. So we can see what it sounds like to have a half sine, half triangle wave if we want. We can see what it sounds like to shift between them as well. And that's pretty cool. There's also this tension here, which you can see creates kind of a more convex or concave shape based on which way this tension is going. And if we turn this all the way up, it's gonna sound a lot more like a square wave. Then you also have the skew here, and that's just gonna skew it from side to side. So this is a cool little plugin to mess around with if you wanna make some com more complex waves. Before we move on to Vital, let's look at some of the more common things you'll find in any VST when it comes to synthesis. One being an envelope. So if you enable an envelope, that just means that it's modulating a certain parameter based on when you click a note. So that might be the cutoff of your filter, that might be your volume, it might be some effect. Typically, it will be your volume. So right now, envelope is mapped to volume. And if I turn this all the way up here like this, you can hear that it makes a very a very plucky sound. But if I move this over here, you can hear how it kind of gradually builds into the sound. And that's gonna be kind of based on the shape of this envelope. This is called the release right here. And if I let go of the note, it's still gonna play for a little bit, even though I'm not holding the note down. Uh, but if I turn that release all the way off, as soon as I let go of the note, it's going to stop playing. And then you also have an LFO, which is kind of similar to an envelope. For the most part, your LFO will be repeating at some subdivision of your time signature. Okay, so now that we're in Vital, you can see that there's a couple of similarities here. We have different oscillators that we can enable, like so. And then we have our envelope, and we have our LFO, or our low frequency oscillator. Uh, and then we can basically map, decide when to map these things to each other. So for example, if I wanted to take this envelope here and map it to the level, I could do so by holding and dragging the envelope to the level. Uh, and then that way, whenever I trigger the sound and I move this envelope like here, you can hear it makes that plucky sound once again. Similarly, I can take that and then go to the effects and enable a filter 
And this filter will uh, basically apply a dampening effect to uh, anything that's passed through this. But I can take the envelope and I can change where this uh, filter is cutting off. So you can see if I, I can move this cutoff manually, but if I change this filter and put it on here, it's gonna move along with this envelope. So you can hear that it makes a completely different sound now that this uh, envelope is modulating the cutoff position of this filter. You can also, like I said, do a cutoff with your LFO. So if I just uh, disconnect this from the envelope and I put this LFO onto the filter like so and play a note, you can see that the cutoff position is now modulated by this LFO or this low frequency oscillator. And you can see that it's moving at uh, one half beat. So that is uh, twice every beat. Uh, and I can change that to one fourth. So that will now be four times every beat. And I can again change that to an eighth, which will be eight and so on and so forth all the way up until I guess 64 is the limit here which is extremely fast. So a lot of the basis of uh, synthesis is basically just controlling what sounds are heard and what sounds are not. So what we're doing right now is subtract a synthesis by taking a very harmonically rich sound. Don't worry too much about what that means. That just means that it has, it's, it's a very strong sound. Uh, if you compare the, the, the sawtooth wave to a sine wave, for example, you'll hear that the sawtooth wave is a lot louder and a lot brighter. White noise, for example, is extremely bright, and if you listen to it, you'll hear a lot of high end. And by taking one of these, some brighter sounds and subtracting harmonics by using a filter, uh, we can create different sounds. There's also something called additive synthesis, and that's by taking a sound that is not harmonically dense, like a sine wave, and adding harmonics onto it. So let's open up a new vital and let's change this waveform. So right now we have our sawtooth wave selected, but if we go into factory here, uh, we can find the basic shapes right here. And once we click basic shapes, you can see it automatically snaps to a sine wave. We can also change it into any of our other basic shapes by dragging and holding this frame here. So you can see that we have, again, some of these basic shapes that we've talked about here. Pulse width wave, square wave, sawtooth wave, triangle wave, and then our sine wave right here. So to add harmonics to the sine wave, we want to add something called distortion. Now distortion will always add harmonics to your sound. Uh, without this distortion, this is what our sine wave sounds like. You can see here that it is a pure sine wave, and if we look at our EQ here, we can tell that there's only one note being played, uh, and it's, it's very, very low. If we enable this distortion and pull the drive all the way up to 30 decibels, uh, you can see that now this looks more like a square wave. And remember how I mentioned earlier, if you distort a sine wave or any sound, it will really turn into a square wave. So another thing that you'll find in a lot of plugins is something called Unison. Now what Unison is, is basically taking a waveform and then playing it simultaneously with a specified amount of waveforms and they are detuned by a specified amount. If I turn this up to 16 voices, that means that there are gonna be 16 different sawtooth waves played at the same time. And if I change this Unison amount, up to say 50%, that means it's gonna be detuned 50% and panned left and right to both my left and right ears. So now when I play this, you can hear that it's uh, very wide sounding. And if I turn this down, turn the voice back to one, you can see that it's very mono and that means it's just played right in the center. A good thing to know when you're making sounds is uh, this attack, you might wanna leave just a little bit there and a little bit of your release because otherwise you might get clicking sounds and if you you're making a patch and you constantly hear this tick sound in the, in the background of your music and it's just really getting on your nerves because you can't figure out what it is it might be one of your envelopes uh, and just make sure that attack and that release are not instantaneous because that can be the main culprit of these clicking sounds so another thing, again, LFOs. And these LFOs have different types of modes. One of them being trigger, so that's gonna act kind of like an envelope in the way that if once you press a button, the LFO will start to move. So let's just uh, put this LFO on our level here. So now that's on trigger mode, as soon as I play, you can see that the LFO will start to move. But if I turn this mode to sync, can see that it kind of starts in the middle of the LFO and that's because it's synced to the BPM here. So if I put this uh, note down here and I move this over to here and then I say put a note down here, 
you can see that it is synced to the BPM. And no matter where I start, it'll always be synced to the BPM, rather than if it is on trigger, for example, if I start this in the middle of the sound, it's not synced to the BPM. But if this is on sync, it will be. Next, we have envelope, and that will act very similar to the same way that we have this right here. Um, so we can basically just tell it to make any kind of shape, and it will only play once, regardless if the note is held down. So like that, every time a note is played, it'll go through this uh, LFO one time, and then it'll stop. There are three other ones, sustain, envelope, loop point, and loop hold, which I'm not going to go into too much detail here. The main three are trigger, sync, and envelope. Those are the good ones to know. Effects that you'll find in a lot of VSTs will be these. Uh, I'd say the ones that you should focus on first would be delay and reverb. Those are the ones that will make your sound more interesting. So if we just take our uh, envelope here and we make a little pluck sound like so, We can add a little bit of reverb and a little bit of delay here. And get some cool, cool little sounds out of it. And then let's turn up our reverb a little bit and let's say, okay, maybe we want the, the sound that it's reverberating in to be a little bit bigger, uh, and then we can do that and say we want to reverb a little bit longer. We can turn our time up like so. And we get this really long reverb tail. Pretty much any effect you will have some type of mix in there and that's just going to be basically uh, how much of the effect is being applied to the signal. So if one signal goes in um, and then the effect creates another sound, uh, and then you have that mix at 50-50, it'll play 50% of the original sound and 50% of the new sound created by the effect. Uh, and then if you have it at 100%, it'll be 100% the effect signal. Um, and if you have it at zero, then it'll be 100% the non-affected signal. Uh, and this is known as wet and dry signals. So the dry signal is the non-affected signal and the wet signal is the affected signal. Uh, and those are terms that you will hear a lot, so there you go. These other ones are kind of like filters. Uh, you can think of, think of them as kind of moving filters that will just create kind of wacky sounds. Porous is very similar to your unison here, so you can kind of think of it like unison, except the sounds kind of move around in space and tune, so it's a little bit different. Compression. A compressor will basically change the dynamic of your sound. Now, those are complicated terms, I know, and a lot of people don't understand compressors and don't feel pressured to go ahead and learn compressors right away. But basically what a compressor does in the simplest terms is take the loudest sound and the quietest sound and make them closer to each other. It compresses the sound. Now, there are multiband compressors, which I'm not gonna really get into, but single band compressors do exactly uh, what you would expect. They take quiet sounds and make them louder, and they take louder sounds and make them quieter. Uh, so that's kind of just a good thing to know. So this is our EQ here. You can see that there are different options for what we want each of these points to be. We can change this to a low pass, like so. So that's taking out the high end. Uh, or we can have it as a high shelf. So that would say like we want our high end to be at this amount. Um, and then similarly, we have our low end shelf here and we can turn that to a high pass like so. So it's taking out the lows and allowing the highs to pass through. Uh, and then we have our mids here and we can turn this into a band pass. So it's gonna cut out some of the lows uh, like so. Uh, and then we have our resonance here, which is just gonna basically control how intense the curve in between these points is. Then you have your filter here, very similar to EQ, except there are different types of filters uh, and you can scroll through them to see what they look like. Now you kind of understand how to use a VST. And now if we go into something like Serum, we'll see a lot of the same things and you will find it to be kind of intuitive once you've worked with a lot of plugins. So again, we have our envelopes here, which look very similar, our LFOs, which look very similar. Uh, we have our default shapes, if we go into here. We have our basic shapes. 
So we have sine wave, we have our sawtooth wave, triangle wave, inner square wave, pulse wave. And yeah, so there's, uh, again, a bunch of these same effects, distortion, chorus, like all of these are pretty much the exact same effects. A lot of these things you'll be able to uh, spot in different VSTs, depending on which ones you're using, and you'll kind of be able to get a intuitive understanding on how to use a plugin based on your previous knowledge. If you want a part two, learning some more advanced stuff in synthesis, then I'd be happy to make that. Just make sure you let me know. Uh, you can join my Discord and give me suggestions there, or you can maybe drop some of your music and let me give you some feedback. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you learned something. As always, I will see you in the next video.